What's up, everybody? My name is OMG, WTF, LOL, FTW, BRB. Welcome back to more WWE vs. TEW, the weekly series where we take the events and shows that the WWE books, run them in the game to see just how well the WWE does against TEW, or if Total Extreme Wrestling will be the company that brings the WWE down to its knees. Today we are booking 205 Live, everybody's favorite show, the hottest hour on television despite not being on television. Still not sure how they do that, but they do it. Of course, this is the August 7th edition of 205 Live. You just watch SmackDown, you would know that. Seems like the uh, the music in the last video, around the 70 mark, you guys were able to not only hear it, but it didn't overpower me as well. So I'm going to try to keep it around there. Hopefully, it still, you know, stays that way. I don't think it should change, but you never know nowadays, it seems like. But uh, let's go ahead and start the show, shall we? Because I've still got a lot of shows to catch up on if I want to get SummerSlam up on Monday. So, 34E plus rating here as we get our cold open for 205 Live. Drake Maverick, the GM, just hyping up what we're going to see tonight. The Lucha House Party being represented by Lince Dorado and Kalisto this week. Oh, my phone just went off. Lovely. They'll be taking on the team of Buddy Murphy and Tony Nese. And then in our main event of the night, Mustafa Ali battles Hideo Itami. And what I guess has been a feud between the two, but not really. They, they, they kind of sell it like these two have been feuding, but no, they've just kind of been in similar matches and this works out, you know. That's how I look at it. I don't really look at this as a feud, even though we did go ahead and start a storyline for them. Because it could be a feud after tonight, for all I know. You know I press the button game, but apparently you don't. 33 E plus rating as we hype up the cruiserweight collision that happened last week with Drew Gulak and Jack Gallagher pretty much setting up Cedric Alexander after his match against the Brian Kendrick. And then of course also highlighting the uh, matchup between Hideo and Atami and Mustafa Ali that will still take place later on tonight. I was going to say, I know I pressed it. Opening match of the night, 38 D minus rating here. And about that didn't have much way in heat. Terrible wrestling. Buddy Murphy and Tony Nese going over to Lucha House Party. Kalince, Kalisto, and Lince Dorado. And 11 minutes, 18 seconds after Tony Nese defeated Kalisto with a flash pinfall after distraction from Buddy Murphy. So, um, Grand Metal League has returned. He was out there tonight. A little bit of um, outside action going on here. Kaliso took his eye off the ball by staring at Buddy Murphy instead of Tony Nese, and Nese was able to take advantage of it by rolling him up for the win. So uh, the match itself really wasn't that bad. Actually, a pretty fun opening matchup here. Crowd was pretty invested in it, to my surprise. Definitely more than they were in the matches later on in the night here. Um, but a lot of high, fast-paced action here, high-risk action. Um, Kalisto and uh, Lince Dorado have pretty good chemistry together. Not in our game, but in real life, they have pretty good chemistry together. In our game, they have a... Uh, well, they have no chemistry. They don't work well as a team. Their timing's all over the place. This is something we've already known. But um, the WWE is very insistent on doing this match still. And I don't blame them because they, they have good chemistry, I would say. But um, here, they don't. So that's kind of the downfall whenever Kalisto and Lince Dorado get used together. But that's what happens. Nonetheless, Buddy Murphy getting better at his gimmick. Tony Nese really off his game tonight. Come on, Tony. Tony's getting better at his gimmick, though. Uh, we already know about the chemistry between Kaliste and Lince Dorado and the good chemistry between Vic Joseph and Percy Watson. Uh, this match did go ahead and cool the crowd a little bit here. Lince Dorado with an in-ring performance of a 33. Looks like he was the worst of the match. Kalisto with a 40, the best of the match. Tony Nese with a 36, and Buddy Murphy with a 39. It did lose heat for the Lucha House Party feud, unfortunately, though. Oh, look at this. Jamie Noble lets us know that Buddy Murphy debuted a new power spot that showcased his ability to sell well. His psychology will be helped by being able to use it as a go-to spot in the future. Huh. I love when stuff like that happens. Good, good job, buddy. Good job. 
37 D minus as we see Mustafa Ali backstage getting ready for his upcoming match against Hideo Itami later on tonight. When the DM GM Drake Maverick walks in to check up on Mustafa Ali, uh, the main story here, and actually, I, I really actually like this idea of a story here. The main story here is that Mustafa Ali has really been pushing himself too hard in his matches as of late, and it's really taken a toll on his body to where he's been injured and having to stay in the hospital for, I believe, like the past week or something here. Great story because if you watch any of the Mustafa Ali matches, that's really kind of his character right now is that. He goes all out. He he takes pretty much every move that he can take, and no matter how hard hitting it is or being dropped on his neck or whatever the hell he, it is, he still kicks out. Like Mustafa Ali is the heart of 205 Live. He doesn't quit, and it's kind of taking a toll on him. And Drake Maverick is out here. He lets Mustafa know, look, I appreciate everything you do in the ring. No one appreciates it more than me, but... You know, I still care about you, dude. Like, I want to make sure you're okay. And Mustafa assures Drake Maverick that he's fine. He's raring to go. The doctor said he's okay. And um, he ain't going to miss out on an opportunity to take on Hideo Itami, pretty much. So, Drake Maverick believes him. And we move on from that. That goes ahead and does start the Mustafa Ali Hideo Itami feud that apparently has already begun. But I disagree. They, they're, the main highlight here is that Itami's been kind of like really beaten down on Mustafa Ali. My, again, I don't see much of a story here. I see Hideo Itami trying to make an impact. And the reason it looks like he was beaten down on Mustafa Ali is because Mustafa Ali just so happened to be in those number one contenders matches. It wasn't just Mustafa Ali he was beating up on. He beat up on Buddy Murphy when he interfered. He beat up on uh, Drew Gulak during their match. Like It was just, you know, circumstantial is how I view it. But anyway, I do like the story, like storyline they're telling that Mustafa Ali is kind of working injured right now and really pushing his body far past its limits at the moment. I, I, I really like that idea of the storyline because it's something that we've been seeing. Like every week or every time he's in action, it's just like he gives everything. Like there's times where I'm like, geez, dude, this guy is still going. But anyway, 35 E plus is afterwards. We see Hideo Itami. He's, you know, warming up, getting ready for his upcoming match later on tonight against Mustafa Ali. And he uh, looks into the camera and he tells Mustafa, you should have showed me some respect. So I guess uh, that's why Mustafa got the extra beatings, because he showed Hideo no respect. Although I'd say no one shows Hideo respect. 31 E plus rating here as we get a special look at Noam Dar just kind of showcasing uh, what he's all about from his injury on Monday Night Raw and how he's worked his way back here as a little bit of a brief view with TJP that's still going on a little bit of jabs thrown at TJP but nonetheless hyping up Noam Dar I am going to go ahead and make a change here I'm pretty sure that Noam's a complete and 100% face it's going to go bad it always does because well you know we, yeah, it's going to go bad because we've had too many shock turns and stuff like that, but that's okay. What's not okay, though, is Noam Dar's gimmick getting an awful rating. His cool gimmick got an awful rating from his very good old school heel gimmick. So, Noam Dar, uh, not too cool. In fact, it probably got awful because I didn't change him to a face. You know what? That was my bad. I'm going to actually go back. So let's go back. I normally don't like doing this, but we're going to go back. That was my fault. I'm going to give Noam a second chance on that turn, mostly because um, I realized I clicked gimmick change and not complete the full turn. So 35 E plus for the cold open, 31 E plus for the hype of the cruiserweight collision and the main event match. 37 D minus for the opening match between Buddy Murphy and Nice going over Lucha House Party members Kalisto and Lindsay Dorado. 42 solid D of Dr for Drake Maverick checking in on Mustafa Ali. So far, it looks like everything else is doing pretty good. A lot better than last show. 39 D plus for Hideo Itami telling Mustafa he should have showed him some respect. And then we get a special look at Noam Dar. 34 E plus. Let's actually wait. Let's not... No, no, we'll do the... We'll wait, we'll wait. We'll do the next... We'll do it in the next... Uh, actually, you know what? I can't. It's a match. I can't do it in the next match. Sorry. So let's actually do it here. We'll, we'll go ahead and complete the turn right here. So his 
gimmick change. It still didn't do good. He got a below average, but it's better than awful. But it's definitely a downgrade from his very good gimmick from his old school heal. But average isn't that bad. Uh, his turn was compromised, though, because, you know, too many turns recently. So we're going to have to give Noam Dar a pretty big bonus to help him out, I think, here afterwards. 29 solid E. This is one of those weird angles that is happening in between the match. TJP kind of watching Noam Dar on the screen in the very awkward way where he's standing to the side where it's like, you can't really see the TV, but he's doing it anyway. But I don't think TJP cares because this entire time as he's watching Noam Dar, he's not really watching him. He's more like, ugh, whatever, who cares as he just checks his phone, so. I get that TJP's trying to play to his gimmick that he doesn't care here and all that, but at the same time I'm like, well, what was the point of turning on the TV if you had no interest in watching him in the first place? Just didn't ring sit well with me because, I mean, TJP's whole part of the story is he's past Noam Dar. He doesn't feel like he, he really, no, he feels like Noam's below him. So why would he even be watching Noam compete? I, I don't get it. But it happened. TJP's getting better at his gimmick. It advanced the storyline altogether. So there you have that. The match itself, though, Noam Dar going against some local talent here. Sugar Dunkerton. Um, this was supposed to be Sean Maluda. If you guys remember him from the uh, 205 Live, or not 205 Live, the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament, the very first one. In fact, there's only been one, so I don't know why I've said that. But um, Sean Maluda is actually based in New York, I believe. So I, since we're in Florida, I'm not able to actually pick him up. But I am going to go ahead and hire Sean Maluda after this video so, you know, we can put him on the 205 Live roster and see if we can do something well i'll only do something if we does something with him and i don't think they're gonna do anything but he got his own entrance music and everything so who knows maybe the guy's hired uh but what well, we went with sugar sugar dunkerton because even though him and sean maluda may not look alike um and this is gonna kind of sound maybe a little racist here or something i don't know but they kind of have similar hairstyles and when i say that I don't mean Sh Shaw Maluda has an afro, because Sugar Dunkerton clearly has an afro. But they have, like, the same kind of, like, texture-looking, like, uh, hair. I, I don't know how exactly to put that. It's, um... I'm not, I'm not a hair guy. I don't... I don't know anything about hair, but it looks like they have, like, the same kind of texture. That's why I went with Sugar Dunkerton, so... Plus, what a name, right? Anyway, who cares? In a terrible matchup, Noam Dar goes over Sugar in 2 minutes 51 seconds. It did cool the crowd. Noam with an in-ring performance of a 30. Sugar with a 23. So, Also, Sugar Dunkerton making the best of his uh, appearance here tonight. Improving in performance, technical, and rumble. Good for you, Sugar. 40 D minus as we get a recap of Cedric Alexander's win last week over the Brian Kendrick, which led to Drew Gulak kind of setting him up, distracting Alexander for Jack Gallagher to come in and hit him with a headbutt. So just a brief recap of what happened last week. 40 D minus there. And then we jump into a backstage angle that or that apparently happened earlier tonight when Cedric was sitting in the uh, seats where the crowd sits. 36 D minus rating as uh, Cedric Alexander expresses that he isn't surprised by Drew Gulak's actions last week, but goes on to say that if Jack Gallagher wants to step up and fight me, he's got no problem facing Jack Gallagher next week. So he issues the challenge, lost some heat for the championship feud here, but we then jump into a 41 solid D rating as Drew Gulak and company. I really like Gulak's promo here because he had like a podium sitting in front of him. Great stuff. And, uh, I always felt like Kendrick and Gallagher were kind of a weird fit with Drew Gulak, but watching them all stand with each other made me kind of go, you know what, I'm wrong. This this makes a, this makes is a good fit. This is a good fit. You got Jack Gallagher, who he wears the suits and all that. He looks like he fits with Gulak. And then Kendrick, who may not wear the suits and all that, but he's kind of got that, that crazed stare in his eyes to where, you know, he, he enjoys what Gulak does, all the submission-based stuff he does. And he, he's the veteran, so, of course... Uh, Kendrick might be seem, seem like the oddball, but I, I still feel like he, he fits. I don't know how to explain it, but I feel like he fits. Gulak's response to Cedric pretty much is that, um, you know what? You want to take on Jack Gallagher next week, just five days before our championship match? You go right ahead. You face the gentleman, Jack Gallagher. I've got no problem with that. But while you're out there facing Jack Gallagher, I'm going to be focusing on the bigger picture, and that's the Cruiserweight Championship. So, great promo from Drew Gulak. Loved it. Loved uh, loved both promos, to be honest. But Gulak definitely had the better promo. 
Uh, 29, solid E rating. It is definitely confirmed. It is officially confirmed. Cedric Alexander will go ahead and face gentleman Jack Gallagher next week on 205 Live alongside Leo Rush battling Akira Tozawa. So Tozawa getting his rematch next week. And then finally, it's main event time. 43, solid D rating here. In a poor matchup, Hideo Itami goes over Mustafa Ali in 20 minutes, 20 seconds with a go to sleep. Uh, that's not exactly how he beat Hideo, or excuse me, Mustafa Ali. He more likely beat Mustafa Ali by hitting some very ferocious looking running drop kicks into the corner. Hit like three of them before uh, beating Mustafa Ali. Again, playing up to the story that Mustafa Ali just doesn't stay down. And Hideo Itami had to get more aggressive to keep him down pretty much, so... Uh, Vic and Percy Watson, we already know about their chemistry. Mustafa with an in-ring performance of a 31. Hideo with an in-ring performance of a 48. It did gain heat for the feud. And uh, I'd say this is probably an accurate rating for the match itself, even though it's this is probably considered the best match of our night. I wouldn't say it was the best match of the night, though, because uh, this match definitely was long, as you can see, and it dragged. It definitely dragged in a lot of spots here. Um... Definitely uh, was a, was about that. Just seemed like it went on for for too long. I feel. With that being said, though, the storyline was still being told of Mustafa kind of you know being out of it, his injuries kind of catching up to him, and Hideo Itami just being the last guy you should be in the ring with when you you're injured because he's just aggressive and he goes all gung ho. I mean, we saw him try to do the turnbuckle drop kick, or not the turnbuckle drop kick, I guess, but more like the steel step drop kick because instead of him being in a turnbuckle he's he was in the steps but some hard hitting action here Hideo Watami pulls out the victory but this isn't the last of this feud I can guarantee that and then we end off the night with a 39 D minus as Mustafa Ali gets up to his feet but it's not for long because as he tries to exit the ring the dude passes out he falls down the referee checks on him um, he keeps asking him what year it is. Mustafa Ali is clearly is responding to him, saying it's it's 2018. Um, but the referees just like Mustafa, look at me. What year it is? Oh, it's 2018. No, Mustafa, what year is it? It's it's 2018, dude. <laughs> like I was just like, dude, he answered you already. Like he's what? <laughs> Stop! Shut up! Stop asking him the same question. And then what made me laugh even more is when Drake Maverick came down to check on Mustafa Ali. Drake Maverick's a great actor, by the way. Like, he comes down, he makes it look, like, straight up that he's worried. He's sitting there, hold my hand, Mustafa. Don't worry, it's okay. Are you okay? Drake Maverick sells his part perfectly, whether it was when he was in TNA or, you know, Impact Wrestling when he was Rockstar Spud, and now that he's Drake Maverick here in 205, I've always been a fan of Spud. But this guy is, is great. This guy is one of the best actor entertainers may not be the best wrestler in the world but he's a manager authority figure color commentator i don't care what you say drake maverick you put a mic in his way you, you let him talk the guy gets over i love drake maverick he is such a great actor but like i said the one thing that cracked me up is when he comes out there to referee <laughs> the referee looks at drake Ma he looks at Drake Maverick, right? And he goes, he doesn't know what year it is. What? Yes, he does. Mustafa Ali has already told you many, many times now. It's 2018. Do not lie to the general manager's face and tell him that this man does not know what year it is. You're deaf, you dumb ref. Oh my God, that had me laughing out loud. <laughs> Still does. Wow, this did horrible. We get a 33 E plus rating for 205 Live. I blame the fact that the crowd wasn't happy that they expected more angles and interview segments. This is I, I should have mentioned it. I'm very forgetful when, when this stuff happens because I just don't think about it. But this is one of those rare moments where we had more matches than we had angles. Sometimes it happens where you have more angles than matches. In fact, it feels like that's more common. This time, not the case. Way more matches than we should have had, but that's not my doing. That's WWE's doing, and it bit them in the ass because look at that. 33 E+. This, this show should not have gotten a 33 E+. I think 
a D rating would have been more accurate, if you ask me. No John Cena, so I can't get the C, but... Well, what can you do? It's not my fault. <laughs> I'm not the one who booked the show. I'm just the one that watches the show and goes, Hey, that's what we're doing? Okay, WWE, I don't agree, but let's do it. <laughs> the... This this is funny. I, I I was trying to donate a vehicle of mine um, to this one place, right? And uh, they they just would not respond to me. And now I've already donated a vehicle, and I just got a response from the lady, and she's she's very very upset. She she put in like all capitals. Are you still interested in donating your vehicle? <laughs> no, I'm not because you guys kept sending me the same dumbass email over again and I just donated it to somebody else so Samantha if you're watching this video from uh, vehicles for veterans or whatever the hell it is no I'm not interested in doing it so stop stop calling me stop emailing me stop everything vehicles gone some nice Hispanic man took it <laughs> All right, though, that's going to be the end of this video. I'm stalling long enough here. Hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, do me a favor. Leave me a comment, like, subscribe if you have not already. And don't forget to share this video with your friends, Facebooks, Twitters, Instagrams. I don't give a damn. Anybody out there that you feel would enjoy my content, give them a share. Help your boy out, grow here. Get some new subscribers up in this bitch. And as always, I've got some buddies of my own you're more than welcome to check out. Zach Manzi, NVO, over on Twitch. Very active. Streams wrestling games. Watches wrestling. Streams Overwatch. Smite. My boy Zach is active. Give him a check out. Raging Yoshi here on YouTube. Uh, he, he Maybe not as active as Zach is. He's still doing his grind. Give him a check out as well. And... Um, my boy, Skylar Mars, give him a check out. He's not dead, he just uploaded a video, pretty much walking him back, explaining where he's been all this time. Definitely give my man, Skylar Mars, a check out. I don't know if he's in my description down below. If he's not, I'll have to add him. But check them out, and as always, my name's been OMGWTF, LOLTWBRB. I will see you guys for Monday Night Raw, which hopefully I will have up as soon as I can. Have a good one, guys.